Today we will review the uh, ultimate web researcher which utilizes Cloud3 Opus GPT-4 perplexity search and access search. And again, it has the ability to search the internet, extract entities and save them and combine entities uh, based on your multiple search terms. Let's go ahead and ask it some stuff. I have cleared the research folder so we begin fresh. Unfortunately, there was an earthquake in Taiwan. Let's go ahead and ask it what is the latest on the Taiwan earthquake. And I do wish the best to all who are affected. So the agent decides to use perplexity search with this search term, Taiwan Earthquake Latest News. And we are getting the results from perplexity. The code files for this project will be available at my Patreon at the architect level, by the way. And now uh, we have saved our uh, results from the perplexity search and we are extracting entities in the background. And our entities has arrived. We can go ahead and ask additional questions. Will this affect GPU manufacturing? And it decides to use perplexity search. It defaults to perplexity search but you can also specify to use excess search. It also creates proper search terms, Taiwan earthquake impact on GPU manufacturing, and we can read about it here. So it did, uh, apparently it did affect it, but uh, not in a significant way. So we have saved that search result too, and we are getting the entities extracted. We can also ask something unrelated. What is the world's fastest GPU right now? Use EXA. Now we're gonna use excess search. We have also extracted entities from our previous question. This time it decided to use EXA because we have explicitly specified it's going to search for world's fastest GPU 2023. And these are the URLs it's considering. And uh, it says that search results do not directly answer the question, but nevertheless, we got an answer summarized by uh, Claude. And uh, we have extracted entities for that too. Excel search can be a hit or miss. Uh, perplexity can be concise. So it's a, a trade off between the two. We will be taking a look at the diagram for this code and overviewing it. But you can also watch my ultimate GPT researcher for a more in-depth uh, review of the code. You can also combine entities with a combine command. When you do that, we automatically combine the entities that we have so far programmatically, but we also can choose yes here to combine the entities using Opus or GPT in, in an intelligent manner. Let's see what happens. While this is ongoing, uh, you can also find all my videos, over 270 of them by now. I have to update this, but at my website, echohive.live. And if you're a patron, you can easily click on the code download links and uh, get the, to download the code and experiment with it. Okay, we have got the AI combined entities, which is intelligently reorganizing the combined entities. So let's say if there's any duplicates and things like that. We can also go ahead and ask something unrelated to our current query. Let's ask what is AsyncIO and how is it different than threading? I'm trying to get it to answer a question without using web search. Let's see what happens. And we are getting a regular response without uh, performing search. And because in the beginning of our code, we've said extract entities from regular responses to true, we will actually uh, be extracting responses from this as well. Extracting entities, I mean. You can set this to false if you don't, if you only want entities extracted uh, from the search web search results. Here we go, we have our entities. And because uh, we, we did this after combining entities, we can actually go ahead and combine again. And we can let AI to combine it as well. And then this way, you can actually be researching multiple different subjects and combine and recombine later smoothly without, uh, without any issues. So as you can see, after the earthquake uh, entities, we are now getting the entities for AsyncIO and whatnot as well. So this is how it works in a nutshell. We can experiment with this more to be able to use this. You do need the EXA API key, which is an interesting intelligent search engine, and also Perplexity API key along with OpenAI and Anthropic. We are using my OpenAI and Cloud Unified classes, which just simplifies the process to manage history and actually sending messages and handling streaming responses, both for OpenAI and Cloud. You can find out more about OpenAI Unified and how I created it, my OpenAI Unified API video. But all the code files for this will be available at my Patreon anyway. So let's uh, take a look at the diagram and see how this works. So in the beginning, we are instantiating three, this says GPT, but if you choose Opus, then it's gonna be either GPT or Opus instances for a regular chat for a switch port, which decides whether to use perplexity, EXA, or uh, return regular chat. And we instantiate a GPT entity extractor and we run it in a separate thread. And the communication between our main script and this thread, entity extractor thread, is handled by a queue, which we initiate. So anytime uh, we have done a web search, or if we have set to extract entities from regular responses to true, then we send these to a queue and this entity extractor just picks them up. Uh, uses the uh, either GPT or Opus to extract these entities, writes them to a JSON file. And if you do select to extract entities, 
with AI, then we send the combined JSON, which is combined programmatically. And if you have selected the combine option, and send it uh, to GPT to combine it uh, intelligently. So this is how it works. And then the loop continues. We do ask the same uh, question whether you want to save the input or not. That is That determines if you're going to save these files into the research folder, if you just want to chat without uh, having to deal with like com combine and things like that. You can actually choose now when that is asked. If you would like to learn continuously like I do, check out the latest version of my AutoStreamer at autostreamer.live. It allows you to learn and teach anything, create live educational content, and build deployable course websites. It is a standalone app, and you can download a free demo version. It uses your OpenAI API key to create websites like this, such as about marketing. Marketing process. The marketing process is... You can listen to it live or just read it. And it can create all sorts of courses. You know, your imagination is the limit. All you have to do is enter a, a title, course title, and select how many chapters you want to generate. It generates a course outline, then you generate the course with these settings in mind. It's at autostreamer.live. If you have any questions about it, feel free to ask me at Discord. In the beginning of the script, we ask uh, whether you want to use Cloud3 Opus or GPT-4. We can, we can actually break out of this and start it again so you can see it, see how that works uh, from scratch. So he's asking us which model to use. We're going to select Opus. And then at this point, we are instantiating a cloud chat. Then the cloud chat class from Cloud Unified allows us to set attributes for mix words per message and mix history words. Currently, the mix history words is set to 20,000, but let's change it to 5,000. So this automatically trims the message history and it automatically manages the you, you, you role, message roles, whether it's a user message or assistant message. We instantiate a cloud switchboard. And we set its mix history to 500 because we don't really want this to, this is just to decide whether if the agent's going to decide to use perplexity, EXO, or uh, regular search. We set streaming to false. By default, streaming is set to true. And you can actually name them as well. This is going to be called switchboard. Also, we instantiate an entity extractor. This also is going to have streaming false. And the name is entity extractor. The entity extractor is going to run in a separate thread. So therefore, we don't want to print anything in the terminal and bug down. That's a process that happens in parallel. And when it's done, the results are written to these JSON files. If you've selected GPT-4 preview, then the same thing happens for GPT. We create a research folder if it doesn't exist. And then if uh, we have used GPT-4 Turbo, then we add the system message for switchboard, which is going to decide between perplexity and exa. It's going to return false. If uh, we want, if it decides to return a regular response without any uh, context, for the web search entity extractor system message is designed to extract entities but uh, the thing is with the cloud is uh, we are actually if you look at gpt we can actually set a json mode to true because openai unified has json mode parameter and it handles that stuff automatically but cloud doesn't have any json mode specification so we have to be a bit more careful that's why you can actually, when you're instantiating the system message for GPT, you can just give it the JSON object by mentioning the JSON and the system message and everything is done. But it's a bit uh, tricky with Claude. Uh, that's why I added the statement, return to JSON, so we can immediately use JSON.loads on it. It still sometimes makes mistakes, but rarely. And the entity extractor message is the same, but again, with the uh, indicator that uh, we want to be able to use JSON.loads on it. And we do have a check message order. So this is also another quirk that we need to deal with with Opus. Uh, Opus API doesn't accept two consecutive roles of the same type in the message history, whereas OpenAI API doesn't have a problem with that. So you'll get an error if you have two user messages in a row or two assistant messages in a row. So therefore we actually check. And if we do find it because of this complex nature of this code, we just insert with the opposite role in between those two messages, just saying, let's continue. We have a search, save search results function, which just actually does quite a lot of processing, figures out the file numbering, the search query turns into a file name, and then we both save the text files. And that's what it does, saves the text files. Uh, extract entities function, which we are defining here, is going to work with the queue. We haven't instantiated the queue yet, but we are just simply defining the function. So we, it's, it's going to continually check within a while loop the entity queue. If we go back to the chart, uh, the diagram, we see that this queue uh, is going to be instantiated and we're going to be able to put stuff into it. And this function, which we're going to run in a separate thread, is going to continually check 
for this queue and retrieve from it and it's going to make a call to the GP, uh, cloud entity extractor if we have that selected otherwise gpt4 and then we are going to return the search results and get the entities and in the case that uh, we get an error entity we're just going to print an error message and continue this can happen with cloud you can try to work with the system message to make it uh, better at returning json objects but uh, it does a good job for, for the most part but as you can see it's so much simpler with gpt and then once we have the entities we again do some check within this folder so that we can actually appropriately enumerate the files we get the existing files but we do make sure that we get the files when if ai and combine is not in the file name because when we combine the files we're going to write this combined entities and ai combined entities and we want to exclude that so we do take care of that and the rest of it is just to write the file uh, here we instantiate our queue and we start our uh, extract entities function in a separate thread then we enter our while loop and we ask if we want to save the search results uh, and we display the status of that for example it's asking us that question right now would you like to save search results if i say yes then it's going to print that so we get to see we can actually toggle this on and off now we uh, set this to false so you can actually turn on the saving of the search results on and off for example if you wanted to why would you want to do that if while you're doing research maybe you just want to do some uh, because you uh, because all these files are going to be combined into a combined entities json and maybe you just want to ask some questions without maybe it's like exploratory questions but you don't want that to be involved with the json uh, extraction of the entities so therefore you can turn it off ask some questions and then say save again to turn it back on Okay, and the combine uh, command is to, of course, trigger that combination process. So that's what this does. We do some checks here. And we ask, so we do check to see if this was, sorry, yes, yeah, so if we do see, we do, this is the process about the save, but then if we see that user input was combined, then we combine it programmatically right here to combine into these JSON. But we also ask if you want to use AI. If, if so, if our model is Opus, then we deal with that with Opus using the, uh, we instantiate a combiner GPT. Uh, actually, should have uh, changed this to Claude. I'll leave it as it is. But at the end of the day, we instantiate a combiner GPT, set its system message, combine the entities. You can actually modify this. And once we have the combined entities, we json.load them. Again, this process is simpler with GPT. And now we just json.dump them into the AI combined entities file once we, the AI has processed those. Other than that, once we have our message, we add it to their respective message histories, and then we make a, make a call to the switchboard, depending on the model here. That's why we are doing quite a lot of checks here, both for Opus and GPT-4, every step of the way. And again, we do have to be mindful of the Opus's quirks uh, of the JSON objects. If, if you can't get this JSON object parsed, then we actually... We can print an error, but we don't want to. We're just going to assume that we're not going to do a uh, search. If this happens and you, you wanted to do search, then ask the question in a more clear way, perhaps also, or ask it again, because Claude just sometimes may return incorrect JSON objects from my experience. Otherwise, again, this process is much simpler with GPT. And if search is needed, and if we've decided on perplexity, then we actually uh, ask both Claude or GPT to return a search term. Uh, and the interesting thing about the add message uh, method from unified classes is that even though that class may have been initiated with streaming set to true you can individually turn off streaming for particular chat uh, responses sorry i said add message but i meant the chat method should print false so we actually return the uh, message without printing in real time so just not to get the entire process confused and then once we have the general search term we print the search term and we we perform a perplexity search in this case add that result to the message history so and then at this point we are performing the perplexity search because we are in the statement that needed perplexity search and once we have the perplexity search results we add it to the message history for claude and we do the same of course with gpt if that's the model we've selected here we call the check message role order just to make sure that claude's message history don't have consecutive same roles you remember this is what we were doing over here we don't have to do that check with GPT, and then and if you have the save search results, then we put it put the search uh, results into entity queue, and our parallel extract entity thread is going to handle the rest of it, and we save the search results, so we save it as a text file, 
And if, if it's Excel, we do the exact same thing, except we perform Excel search. These are uh, methods within both classes, just uh, making calls to Excel search or perplexity search, respectively. Like I said, you can download the files from Patreon, or you can actually, like I said, watch the uh, OpenAI Unified API to see how I built this class. If I hadn't used these classes, then this code is 300 lines, but it would have been maybe close to six or 700. So it just really simplifies things. So Excel search actually, uh, we, we get the, by the way, Excel search results and we print the URLs, uh, but we also have to combine these uh, results and we are getting three results. You can actually modify this to return uh, more results. Uh, Perplexity actually analyzes the search results that it performs and actually gives you a concise answer versus Excel is like more like pure search. So you don't have to combine them. So we can actually send these to open source GPT for analysis. We see which URLs we're using. We print those URLs and now we uh, put the entity into the queue, the results into the queue so we can extract the entities. We save the search results. And then depending on which model we have chosen, we ask them, please answer the question. This, whatever we were asking based on the search results, this is for EXA. And since EXA is going to return the extracted content of web URLs, we do want to clear it from history. You can remove this line if you want because it can return quite a lot of content and I actually clip it both for GPT and Claude because it's just going to cost you extra tokens uh, cost. Otherwise, we otherwise that means we are out of the search if elif statement, if search needed perplexity, elif search needed exa or uh, that means we're not performing search and model is going to respond regularly. We check the message roll order for Claude. We don't have to do that. For GPT, we, we also have a get response method, which is more, more fine grain. If you want to use that instead of chat, we get a response. Then if entity extract entities from regular responses set to true, right? This was in the beginning. Then we will we want to actually put this into queue as well. So we save the search results and we put it into queue. So this this part is I just want to be clear. We I originally thought to extract entities only from the web search results, whether it is perplexity or exa. But since these models, I mean, know quite a lot about the internet, you may want to extract uh, from their raw responses. So that's why extract entities from regular responses set to true by default, but you can turn it off, remember, and you can also use the uh, save command to actually toggle the entity extraction and saving process off. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, you can actually find many over 200 videos that I've created, such as this, this one at my website, echohive.live. And if you're a patron, you can find the code download links to each and every one of them. It is really a, a treasure trove, really. I try to experiment as much as possible. So each video is unique in its own right. I also don't, I also turned off ads on YouTube. So every bit of helps if you do decide to become a patron, not only that you will have access to all these code files, but you would also be helping me out quite a lot. So thank you for your support. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. We have a discord channel with over a thousand members. Let me know what you think there or in the comments and I will see you in the next video.